In this lecture, we will look at factors. In R, factors are used when we want to work with categorical variables. So variables that have a fixed and a known set of possible values are categorical variables. Historically, factors were much easier to work with than characters. And as a result, many of the functions in the base R automatically convert characters into factors. Now this means that factors often crop up in places where they are not actually very helpful. Fortunately, you do not have to worry about that and you can focus on situations where factors are genuinely useful. So when you work on tidyverse, you do not have to worry about this. For this, we will use the package called F-O-R-C-A-T-S, forecasts. Now this is a part of the core tidyverse and it provides us tools for dealing with categorical variables. All right, so let's take our library. Tidyverse. So imagine we have a variable that records months like this. And using a string to record this variable has two problems. There are only 12 possible months and there is nothing that allows us to not make a mistake. That means if I make a typo, if I write the letter N as an M, there really is not much that I can do. Also, it does not sort in a very helpful way. Because if I look at it alphabetically, then it comes like this. APR, DC, JAN, MAR. Now I can fix both of these problems with a factor. To create a factor, we must start by creating a list of the valid levels, which would be like this. Once we have done this, we can now create a factor. Let me do that once again. Once we have created a list, we can create a factor like this. And now if I also want to sort We can sort like this. So any values that are not set in the set will be silently converted into an any, which is what we would have expected. Okay, there's some problem coming. Let me just quickly check that. All right, let's see. So, factor of x2, one second. All right. As you can see, we are getting a NA here. And if you are, if you want a warning, you can use this. If you use parse factor, it tells you that there is a warning and this is the error that is coming. If you omit the levels, then they will be taken from the data in an alphabetical order, like this. Now, sometimes you would prefer that the order of the levels exactly match the order of the first appearance in the data. To do this, create the factor by setting the level to the unique x. For example, here if you notice, 
we are getting December, April, Jan and March. One more way of doing this would be like this. And if you ever need to access the set of valid levels directly, you can do that using levels like this. For the rest of this chapter, I'm going to focus on a general social survey data set. So this is a sample data set, which is a very long running survey data in the US conducted by an independent research organization. And we have hundreds of, or in fact, thousands of questions. So we will select a handful that will illustrate some of the common challenges that you will encounter while working with factors. So here we are working with DSS underscore at like this. You can also put a question mark to see a description of the data. Right. Now, when factors are stored in a table, we cannot see the levels easily. And one way to do this is to use count. Like this. We can also use a bar chart, which would be like this. And by default, ggplot will drop the levels that don't have any values. But if we want to force it to display that value as well, you can do it like this. So this uh, scale x discrete drop equal to false shows that blank value. Now these values simply did not occur in the data set. Now unfortunately, we don't have a drop option, but we expect that it will get added at, the, at some point of time. Let us come to modifying the factor order. Now it is often useful to change the order of the factor levels in a visualization. For example, imagine you want to explore the average number of hours that are spent watching TV per day across religions. To do this, just look at the code from here. It's a fairly simple code. And here we get a scatter chart where it tells us the number of hours on the x-axis and the religion on the y-axis. Now it is difficult to interpret this plot because there is no overall pattern. To do this, we can do a slight modification like this. And as you can see, the values are reordered. And reordering the religion makes it much easier to see the data. Now, when you start to make more complicated transformations, I would recommend that you move them out of the aesthetic mapping and move them into a separate mutate function, something we have already done earlier. And if we want to create a similar plot where we want to see how average age varies across reported income levels, we can do this. Now, as you can see, arbitrarily reordering the levels is not a good idea because it's very difficult to read these numbers. Since there is already a principled order, we should not mess with it. Hence, let me write it once again. This is better where all the numbers come in an order. 
Now another type of reordering is useful when we are coloring the lines on a plot. Let's take an example. Like this. Let's look at the first one, this one, and then let's look at the second one, this, this one. And finally, for bar plots, we can also use like this to create a simple plot. Now let's also see how we can modify the factor levels. Now more powerful than changing the order of the levels is changing the value. And what that allows you to do is to clarify the labels for publication and collapse the levels for a high level display. Let's take an example. So here we get a table 10 into 2. Now these are inconsistent. So if I want them to be longer and I want to use a parallel construction, I can create this. Right? I hope you can see how much clearer the data looks now. Now this will leave out levels that are not explicitly mentioned and it will warn you if you accidentally refer to a level that does not exist. To combine groups, you can also assign multiple old levels to the same new level. Like this. Now you have to be very careful when you're using these techniques. If you group together categories that are truly different, you might have some misleading results. If you want to collapse a lot of levels, we can use this. Like this. And uh, if you just want to group together all the small groups to make a plot or a table simpler, you can use this. Now the default behavior is to progressively group together the smallest groups, ensuring that the aggregate is still the smallest group. Now in this case, it is not very helpful because if it is true that the majority of Americans in the survey are Protestants, we have probably over collapsed. Instead, we can use an N parameter to specify how many groups we want to keep. It would be like this. So here I'm keeping the N as 10 and as you can see, we are getting the result like this, much more, much more cleaner. In the next lecture, we will look at how to handle dates and times.